Hi, hey, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Amber for those of you who are new. Today, I have to backtrack because I just realized I never made an intro clip for this. <laughs> so, we're backtracking. Um, this week, we are doing a page for every time that I picked up my phone the previous week. So I originally saw Becca and the Books, which I'll link her channel down below, but I originally saw her do this two months ago. I watched one of her videos and she did this. And then I recently saw Sarah Caroli do it. And I just love the idea of this. If you go into your settings and you scroll down to screen time and you hit see all activities, go into your week and scroll down, you'll get pickups. And so you'll get to see every single day how many times you picked up your phone. It actually tells you like what you picked up your phone for the most that day. Um, but yeah, so that's the whole idea around this. Every single time that I picked up my, my phone, we add a page to that. Um, so for this, we started off with Two Twisted Crowns by Rachel Gillig. This is the second book in the Shepherd King series. The first one is One Dark Window. On that one, I am on page 236. Currently, we are now reading A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. Third book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. Final book. I am so excited, but I'm also sad. So, let's get right on into it. Yesterday I had to read 50 pages and I ended up reading, I ended up reading 65 pages. Today, today I need to read 118 pages. And yesterday we were reading Two Twisted Crowns by Rachel Gillig. This is the second book in the Shepherd's King series. This just came out four days ago. I honestly don't remember how long. It was last week. Um, I ended up getting this Thursday. I think I ended up getting it on its release date. I had ordered it and it came in the mail through Barnes and Noble and I think it was supposed to come in on Friday but it ended up coming in on Thursday. We ended up getting to chapter 31 last night and this would focus. That would have been page 236 um, and today I don't have my Kindle on me. Today is a Curse for True Love release day. I pre-ordered that on my Kindle and I started it earlier because it is now 1.13. I did start that earlier this morning. I only got to page 15, so we're not really far into it at all. But with today being 118 pages, that's perfect for being release day and I am just so excited to finally get to read that book. I have been waiting for a couple months now. I was happy with my choice to wait until closer to that release day before I read the other two books because if I would have had to wait longer than the two months that I had to wait, I don't really know what I would have done. So anyway, we'll get right into reading and get those 118 pages done. Okay, so yesterday we did not read the 
118 pages that I was supposed to. I read to page 73 on A Curse for True Love. Um, I ended up getting a migraine and I just could not stare at the words. So, unfortunately, I did not make it to that. But we made it to page 73. So, what my plans are is to add the pages that I didn't get to onto today's. So, for today, last Wednesday, I picked up my phone 103 times. So, we have to read 103 pages today, but I'm adding on 45 pages for what I missed yesterday. Our total for today is 148 pages. I'm on page 73 now. We're going to keep reading A Curse for True Love, and I'm hoping that we get this done fairly quickly because I have been waiting for this book. I am so excited to finally get to read it, but I'm also just like, I want to finish it because I just want to know what happens, but at the same time, like, I don't want this world to end. It is bittersweet, and I'm sad about it. Okay, so it's a little bit later. I wanted to do a update. I'm on chapter 14, page 117. We get a Jax POV in this book. That is perfection. That makes me so happy. There's so many highlights that I have just from his chapter that I've read so far. So It's ridiculous. I feel like half of my highlights are just from his POV. We're gonna get back to reading. Um, I've read 44 pages so far today, so we just need to read 104 more pages to get to our 148. I'll have to take a short break for work in a little bit, but then I'm gonna read most of the time until I have to leave. Then when I get back home after dinner time and getting the kids to bed. I plan on binging as much as I can. I will probably stay up late just to read a bunch of this book, so. Okay, so we are now on Thursday. Yesterday our goal was to reach 148 pages, which I did read exactly 148 pages yesterday. We left off on page 222, um, which is chapter 28 in A Curse for True Love. Let's see. And let me just say, I finished that at like 11 something last night. I don't know, it was in the previous clip, but I... I was so tired I couldn't read anymore, but I wanted to because it left off on... One of my favorite tropes. I will not say which one it is, but it is one of my favorite tropes. And it took everything in me not to just keep reading. Okay. This book, I'm at 57% on this book. And it is everything I had hoped it would be. I absolutely love it. Now, let's get into our screen time for today. So... Today is a short one. Today for Thursday, we only have to read, 
I only have to read 67 pages, so not very much. Um, let's get right on in to reading today and get to our 67 pages. It is now Friday. Uh, it is 1.45 in the afternoon. I did do some shopping this morning. Um, I did go to Barnes & Noble. So we'll have a little book haul here in a second. But let's talk about reading wise yesterday. So yesterday I got to page 292 in A Curse for True Love. Uh, we were supposed to read 67 pages, I believe. And I ended up reading 71 pages. So we are... 75% of the way through that. Today I want to finish that. Last Friday it was 121 pickups, so 121 pages today. Uh, I should be able to do that because I want to finish A Curse for True Love today, so I would imagine I'm going to read that much. But now on to the fun part of a book haul. So one of the first books I got was the Barnes Noble exclusive edition to Starling House by Alex E. Harrow. I don't really know a ton of about this book. I've seen it a couple times here and there, but it was in the new releases section and I honestly just loved the way that the cover looked, so I bought it naturally. But this one had like, I don't know, it kind of... If I remember correctly, it was like kind of dark, like dark gothic vibes. So it felt like a perfect now time book, even though knowing me, I won't get to this now. But anyway, um, this one says, I dream sometimes about a house I've never seen. Opal is a lot of things, orphan, high school dropout, full-time cynic, and part-time cashier. But above all, she's determined to find a better life for her younger brother, Jasper. One that gets them out of Eden, Kentucky, a town remarkable for only two things. Bad Luck and E. Starling, the reclusive 19th century author of The Underland who disappeared over 100 years ago. All she left behind were dark rumors and her home. Everyone agrees that it's best to ignore the uncanny mansion and its misanthropic heir Arthur. Almost everyone, anyway. I should be scared, but in the dream I don't hesitate. Opal has been obsessed with The Underland since she was a child. When she gets a chance to step inside Starling House and make some extra cash for her brother's escape fund, she can't resist. But sinister forces are digging deeper into the buried secrets of Starling House, and Arthur's own nightmares have become far too real. As Eden itself seems to be drowning in its own ghosts, Opal realizes that she might finally have found a reason to stick around. In my dream, I'm home, and now she'll have to fight. Welcome to Starling House. Enter if you dare. I think this might be my next read because I want to read this during like spooky season and I'm almost done with A Curse for True Love so this seems only fitting to be the next read. Then we got The Shadow in the Glass by J.J.A. Harwood and this one once upon a time Ella had wished for this I took as I'm pretty sure this is a Cinderella retelling um, once upon a time, Ella had wished for more than a life as a lowly maid, now forced to work hard under the unforgiving, lecherous gaze of the man she once called stepfather. Ella's only refuge is in the books she reads by candlelight, secreted away in the library she isn't permitted to enter. One night among her beloved books of far-off lands, Ella's wishes are answered. At the stroke of midnight, a fairy godmother makes her an offer that will change her life. Seven wishes, hers to make as she pleases. But each wish comes at a price, and Ella must decide whether it's one she's willing to pay. So that one sounded really interesting and lately I have been really into like fairy tale retellings so I'm really excited to get to this one. Plus I just loved the cover of this. It looks so pretty. Then I got The Prison Healer by Lynette, no by Lynette Noni. Nani. And this one, recently I saw Sarah Caroli read it and I believe she said like these are some of her favorite characters she's ever read so I have very similar tastes in books as her so I immediately was like yeah I need to get that but this one is the main character works at a death prison as a healer and a rebel queen ends up coming in she's tasked to keep this rebel queen alive until these trials start but then she gets a message from the family saying to keep her alive that they're on their way 
and she knows that the trials will end up killing this queen. So she ends up volunteering in her place to do the trials. And she's doing that because then her and the queen, if she ends up winning this, will end up gaining their freedom. No one has ever won the trials. So that sounds super interesting. Another one that I really want to get to, but again, that is every book on my TBR are ones that I really want to get to. So, you know. Then I got Kingdom of the Feared, which is Kingdom of the Wicked series. This is the third book in that series. Uh, I haven't even read the first book. And I'm just now realizing that, saying that out loud, I have a problem. Um, yeah. So I haven't read the first one. I already had the first two. I really wanted to get this in the paperback because I got the first two in the paperback. And I haven't been able to find this anywhere and I really didn't want to order it off Amazon. I'm pretty much boycotting buying books off Amazon because I'm tired of the way that they come in the mail. They're like nine out of ten times they're horrifically damaged. So if I could talk. Then I got The Bone Orchard by Sarah A. Mueller. I have no, no clue what this is about at all. I saw this on the table when I walked into Barnes Noble. I liked the cover and I faintly, I don't even know if I actually did. This could be my mind making something up to justify buying a book I know nothing about. I didn't even buy the or read the back. Um, I feel like I saw this in somebody else's YouTube video. I don't know. This says, secrets grow in the dark, tucked away behind a notorious house of ill repute. There is a garden where the trees are made of bones. The clattering, ghastly harvest is tended to by the women who live and work at Orchard House. Charm, the madame, and her haunting, beautiful charges. Shame, justice, desire, pride, and pain. The wealthy and powerful of Born Guard flock to Orchard House to spend their time and money indulging in every excess and inclination except for Charm herself, as she belongs to the emperor alone. But the... But empires die in the light. Now the emperor summons Charm to his deathbed to hear his final decree. Charm must choose which of his off, awful, faithless sons will inherit the empire by discovering which one is responsible for his own murder. If she completes this final task, she will be freed from a life of bondage and servitude. But she must choose, choose what is more important, her freedom or the taste of revenge. Reading that, I'm glad I picked that up. And the last and final book that I got today, another one I know nothing about. I based it solely off the cover. And I found this also next to the Bone Orchard. Seemed like a good enough table to pick from. So this is The Curse of Saints by Kate Dramas. Dramas. Anyway. Um, I read this portion right here. And that was enough of a selling point for me. It says, she was not a beacon of light. She was not a savior of realms. If the gods had chosen her, they had chosen wrong. So I didn't even bother reading the rest of the synopsis. But I'll read it with you now. As an elite spy and the queen's third in command, Aya has dedicated herself to a life of discipline and duty using her god's given abilities to keep dark magic from ever returning to the realm. Her oath ensures she will always act to protect those she fights alongside, including Will, the queen's enforcer, and Aya's bitter rival. Forced by circumstances to work together, enemies to lovers, I like it. Forced by circumstances to work together, okay, forced proximity, I like it. Aya and Will struggle to come to an uneasy truce, but once tragedy strikes, Aya instinctively reacts, unleashing a power that hasn't been seen in over 500 years. Shaken, she's confronted with an impossible truth, one that threatens the precious grip she keeps on her control. One that forces her to work with Will to discover who or what she really is and one that could turn her into a weapon in a war she doesn't know how to win. With Will by her side and untold power at her fingertips, Aya will have to decide. Has she been sent to save the realm she loves or destroy it? I don't know about you guys, but that sounds like my type of book. And I'm very excited to read that. And again... I, this is one of those moments that I'm glad that I based something off of its cover and the first four lines of the synopsis and didn't even bother. I'm, I'm happy with my choice. That sounds really good. And I am now questioning what I want to read next.
Okay, so it's Saturday now. Um, ignore the fact that I'm wearing the same sweatshirt as yesterday. Pretend like that doesn't exist. I got sidetracked last night um, making another video and then editing that to get it up for today. It took a lot longer than I thought it would, but so that's why I didn't update yesterday. Um, but yesterday's goal was 71 pages that we had to get to. I ended up reading, is that right? No, no, it's not. Yesterday, 121 was what we had to read yesterday, not 71. Um, and I ended up reading 126 pages. We finished A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. That book gets five stars. I loved it. Couldn't get enough of it. I'll keep it brief because I did like go in depth in my October wrap-up video about that. The key points on that are the second book is my favorite in the series. I think that's like more six-star ranking for me. Um, and my only like gripe about this was it felt like there were things that were a little unanswered at the end. It kind of leaves it up for you to decide and I don't know if I love or hate that. But the book is still perfection. Evangeline and Jax are still perfection. Jax in himself, perfection. So, five stars. Um, in order to get to that goal, though, that left us... I think that only put us a little under 100 pages. So, I ended up reading more... I have it downstairs and I'm too lazy to go get it. I ended up reading more of Two Twisted Crowns by Rachel Gillig. And so, that ended up getting us to the 126 mark. Um, we left off on page 256 last night on Two Twisted Crowns. So, Tuesday we did not hit our goal, which was a little unfortunate. So, I just tacked that on to Wednesdays. So, I mean, if you look at it like that, we technically met our goal every day. It just on Tuesday, I didn't read it on that day of what I was supposed to. But every other day we did. So, there's something. So, we started Two Twisted Crowns in this, finished A Curse for True Love in this. I think it was pretty successful. I enjoyed doing this. I thought it was fun. I hope you guys thought that that was fun. If you guys have any like ideas for challenges, please let me know down in the comments because I am always looking for like new challenges to do. I like them because they get me reading and they help me not feel like I'm getting in a reading slump. And if I am in a reading slump, they help me get out of my reading slump. So Yes. Oh, also, if you do give me, like, a challenge, if it's from, like, another YouTuber that you've seen, please link their channel with it just so that I can give them, like, the credit of the idea, you know? But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you made it this far, please leave a thumbs up, and I hope to see you in the next one.